what's up. Viva, thanks for the uh, Daddy Bezos bucks. Uh, Karina, you can tell nonsense whenever. Um, kick that off in the background. How y'all doing? Um, and yes, a happy moon new year to you as well, Kaiser. Um, <clears throat> uh, <sighs> I had a DC workout in today. Um, basically I, um, I got full body. I got fucking core legs and arms. Um, aw, a new one. Uh, <laughs> you gotta start yelling at your people to get those raid numbers up. <laughs> Thank you for the raid nonsense. I hear you had a good stream. I'm glad you did. Uh, if you want to come on the air and decompress, you are f you are welcome to. Otherwise, again, thank you for the raid. Uh, <laughs> so she's supposed to ever had. Uh, I yell at mine when uh, when the 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 number the the raid number is dis uh, there's a disparity between the raid number and the number I actually have in chat. Uh, <laughs> I've been known to chastise my community. <laughs> Why are you fuckers raiding out? <laughs> I fucking yell at them. Uh, oh, good Cassidy. Oh, good Cassidy. Um, uh, well, then uh, you, you and I both, can, uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby, and yourself and I can. Um, well, you and I can smoke. Bobby can't. Um, and fucking we can we can have tea or something. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I did, Karina, but I mean, which one? I don't know. <clears throat> was that the sensitive man one? Because I did see that. I saw nonsense singing. Um, I saw I saw nonsense. I, I without context, I would have to guess that nonsense was reminiscing about the old song stylings. Uh, singers used to like sing that way to subtly, not so subtly, try and just drag in some pussy for themselves. Uh, I, I I saw the clip though. I was like, yeah, it sounds about right. Those old old style old old song stylings. They used to have a little more class and subtlety than they do now. Then wet ass pussy. <laughs> uh, channeling my inner Ben Shapiro on that one. <clears throat> Oh, what? Uh, P word. P word. Uh, Kaiser. Kaiser. Never. <laughs> uh, I do not ascribe to those traditions, those cultural traditions. Um, last time I checked, I wasn't, um, of Asian heritage and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be ap accused of cultural appropriation. Of course, that would, that would be, that, that's definitely something I would never do. So I'm sorry, Kaiser, you're going to have to go without your red envelope full of money. Um, it, it's just, it's not my place as a white man, um, or a Spanish man or a black man, depending on what I feel like LARPing as tonight, um, to, to appropriate the, the Asiatic cultural tradition, such as the envelope full of money. So, sorry. Sorry. Leftists ruined that for you, Kaiser. Leftists ruined that for you. Oh. <laughs> uh, I assure you, uh, you don't have the, my last name? No. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> Oh, my name is definitely not uh, of Asian origin. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so, uh, it's, uh, dude, it's Tuesday night. Like I said, uh, I, in, well, I didn't say it, but I put it in the title. Uh, mutual aid self-improvement. I'm going to start doing that. Uh, if there's anything you guys want to work on, um, no, it's actually not English, uh, Karina. Um, uh, 
Well, then, Wither, you may owe Kaiser some money. <laughs> so, how's that human culture working out for you? Kaiser expects a red envelope full of cash from you. <clears throat> um, yeah, if there's anything you guys want to work on self-improvement-wise, um, like, yeah, let's start helping each other out with that. <clears throat> I got no problem yelling at people and knocking things out that way. Um, what? I don't think there's any really headlines worth talking about. I mean, the U.S. is, uh, no, I didn't nonsense. No, I didn't. Um, oh, then Kaiser, you owe Wither an envelope full of money. I'm sorry. Let me just get this straight. Um, Wither, expect an, a red envelope full of cash from Kaiser, uh, shortly. Um, so there you go. Um. Oh, no, I can pass for Spanish. Yeah. I I, I really can. <laughs> the black man may be a stretch, uh, but... They ran out of steak, 40 people brawl, lots of chair throwing. In the video, you hear a man say, Oh, what was some steak in Philly? Uh, you might want to look at the uh, <clears throat> demographics of the video then. Shit, son. World star. World star. Okay, a white man saying world star on the video. Nice touch. Uh, Vishnu, thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, uh, she got suspended for two weeks. Nonsense. Basically for saying that, like, the Klan don't care about Jews. They only care about black people. Like, that basically is what it boiled down to. She basically, you, that's, she just mischaracterized the, the, the Klan. So she got fucking, uh, the, the Jewish head of the studio. <clears throat> Um, had something to say about that. Oh, maybe it was the Holocaust remark too. Caboose, she said a lot of stupid shit that, that segment. There's, there was multiple comments made. Let's just put it that way. Let's characterize it like this. Uh, Whoopi said some stupid ignorant shit and got corrected. And like is tradition for the wealthy and the powerful, um, she, uh, rather than what would happen to most of us, where we'd be out on our ass, Whoopi gets a two-week paid vacation to sit home and think about what she did. Oh, I know, Caboose. I mean, what did fucking NBC expect, right? ABC, NBC, one of the C's, one of the broad, one of the BCs, one of the broadcasting corporations. I think it's ABC. Um, she, you know, they they put a panel of politically ignorant, uneducated entertainers on a on a stage. And then film them for years at a time. Eventually, somebody's going to say some ignorant shit. I mean, what what's the what's the issue? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they had the um, <clears throat> head of the ADL come on and say some more ignorant shit. The head of the ADL came on the show then to explain to them racism. And the head of the AD ADL, of course. Oh yes. 
Oh yes, the head of the ADL, of course, explained that racism is when white people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the head of the ADL said that shit on air. That race racism is when white people. Um. So, I mean, good news to the Uyghurs, though. What they're experiencing isn't racism. Because the Han Chinese aren't white people. So, an ethno-nationalist status structure that is using the ethnic minority status of the Uyghurs against them for the purposes of discrimination isn't racism. Good news. Thanks, ADL. You're really doing a bang-up job out there. I, I don't know what we'd do without you. Yeah. <clears throat> Exactly, Kaiser. They're just hereditary reactionaries. I'm glad you're glad you're learning from the tankies, Kaiser. Yes, that's 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 all. You want to see some creepy ass shit? It's supposed to be cute. I I find this intensely creepy. Um. It's a flying lemur. Nonsense. It's a flying lemur. Yeah, I don't find that cute. I find it creepy as fuck. No, it's not deformed, Crimson. Exactly, Viva. It's a fucking alien. Um... Oh, let's see. It can't be that they're projecting Israel-Palestine to China. Uh, we are. That's just conspiracy talk, right? Yeah, fucking ADL. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Dude, for two, the eyes. The eyes. Weird and cute? Yes. Creepy and cute? No. I find it creepy. So that nullifies the cute. Yep. It's the fucking eyes. The eyes are way too anime. It's creepy as shit. Oh, yeah, uh, Cupcake, the, the, the weird lizard skin sort of situation going on, too? Yeah. No, no. Anime eyes aren't cute. They're creepy. Anime eyes are not. When drawn, okay. It's a stylistic choice. When they actually exist, that's a deformity, and it's weird as fuck. Uh, to the ADL guy, I have something to say. Germany was not originally considered white, so the Holocaust could not have had racist roots. No, Wither. Not for me, it can't. Maybe for you. Not for me. Um. Yeah, dude, the eight, of course, the fucking... Fuck it, ADL doing a bang up job. Yeah, no, they 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 do they do a great job. Every situation, I've found every situation where the head of the ADL comes in to give an interview after an incident, that immediately improves the situation. Uh huh, hundred percent. Yeah, all all of the tension is is removed from the room. <clears throat> Crimson, fair enough. Oh, uh, let's see. I don't know. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Um, I can vibe with the idiot. I mean, I'm not racist anymore. Exactly. You fucking German fuck. Um, do we need to talk about all of the, like how many fucking book bannings and shit are going to happen? Like, 
No, I'm good. I, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I mean, Viva, my, I can't give out N-word passes, so. Oh, fucking everything. It's not a sugar glider. It's, I can tell you for a fact. It's, it's in fact a, uh, a, uh, flying lemur. Um, it is a, also known as a Kalugos. It is, uh, it is a native to the Southeast Asian forest that they inhabit, inhabit. Um, the patagium, the fur covered membrane that extends from the animal's face to the tips of its claws and tail allow the flying lemur to glide as far as 200 feet between trees. When clinging to trees, female flying lemurs shelter their babies in the pouches formed by loose folds in the membranes. They have webbed feet, which help it glide and strong claws aiding in gripping trees. And the eyes are, uh, aid in strong night vision and enhanced depth perception, both of which help it move amongst the trees at night. It's got a tooth comb, uh, a set of long, tiny teeth, which looks like a miniature comb. Help, it's believed to help it feed and clean parasites from its fur. And its skeleton, its bones aren't as lightweight as a bat's, but they are lighter and thinner than a squirrel's, an advantage when uh, flying. It's, uh, it's also known as the, uh, in Latin, Cenophilus volans. <laughs> um, they're creepy. They're creepy. Um, anyway, what's up, Sergey? <clears throat> um, oh, yeah, the tea, uh, the book thing, the tea thing, the book thing. Um, I, I, you know, I forget how many books or what books we're up to at this point in the various locations because everybody's banning books. Fucking all of the Republican states are banning books. Alabama? Alabama. Alabama. I want to say it's Alabama. I'm just going to say it's Alabama. Alabama is... Um, I'm pretty sure it was Alabama. Um, Alabama has made it illegal to teach anything even characterized as CRT. Um, anything that's even even could be characterized as critical race theory, which, by the way, as far as racist white Republicans go, is teaching that there were there was a civil rights movement. Um, it is illegal outright. Um, if you get caught, you can do time. Um, so, you know, that. Um... I just, who would have guessed, right? The people who didn't, who fought segregation and didn't ratify the 13th until like three minutes ago. Um, the people who didn't want to have, you know, their kids being taught next to the dirty Negroes uh, would in fact make it illegal to teach that they didn't want their kids taught next to the dirty Negroes, right? Like, who who would have, who could have seen this coming? Who could have seen this coming? This is just, you know, I, I'm sure it's a coincidence. I'm sure it's a coincidence. And, you know, I, I, banning books on top of that, I, you know, um, I'm sure, I'm sure that has nothing to do with it, right? I, I don't have... Oh, no, come on, they're not allowed to do a whole lot of shit. Yeah, yeah, Red, they did. They seriously did. Yeah. Um, Amorous, in some of these places, they really are already doing that. You, 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 you joke, you jest, but no. Mississippi, Alabama, they're already doing that. That's a real thing. That's just Jewish propaganda. Like, yeah. It's getting scary in some parts of this country. It is legitimately getting scary. Like, it was always, look, if you're black, it, there's still sundown towns. Uh, sundown, uh, sundown towns. There's still sundown towns. Like, that, that's still a thing. For those of you who don't know what a sundown town is, a sundown town is a, is a locale in which after the sun goes down, it is not safe to be black there as in people disappear as in people get got 
That's very much a real thing still to this day. There are noted sundown towns in this country. That's still a thing. I, I, I don't, I don't know what the fuck to say about this. Um, there's a bunch in Louisiana. Louisiana is basically just it. Um, you, you, it, it, Louisiana is, there's states that are basically an exclusionary process for sundown towns. Like Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. There are places that it's safe to be black after the sun, uh, sun goes down. And then there's everything else. And by the way, just because I'm calling out black, the fact of the matter is, is that there's a whole host of things that's not safe to be in these locales. Gay, trans, black, not speak English. It, it is, I, I, and, and now they're, now they're burning books. Now they're burning books, right? Like they're, they're, they're burning books. Oh. Um, like that's. I, I, I legitimately don't know what to say. Like, what what should I say? Right? Like, if you're gay, black, trans, Hispanic in any of these areas, best advice to you is, one, get the fuck out. And two, if you can't get the fuck out, arm yourself. Second Amendment applies to black people just as much as it applies to white people. Second Amendment applies to trans people just as much as it applies to cis people. Second Amendment applies to gay people just as much as it applies to heterosexual people, right? Get you, get you a fucking gun, learn how to use it, carry it everywhere. It's the only advice I have. That's all I can advise uh, for, right? Like, either get the fuck out of these places, which, by the way, is probably the preferable uh, modality, or de- learn how to defend yourself. What's up, Will Alexander? Did you go on 15 popular TV online shows over 30 years claiming you love to vomit on sleeping lions? Uphold this claim to everyone you know or lose surprise and go on a yearly trip where you vomit on five lions safely from a car window until the end of the life. You've got a big community of Americans living together in France if you did it. Jesus Christ, Will Alexander. Um, I didn't feel safe being a woman driving through Texas. I mean... Was that fucking, um, who did that? There's, oh god, I've seen that recently too. Somebody fucking said, like, Pakistan should be on every single female traveler's, uh, uh, bucket list. And what, the best response to it ever was, who the fuck sponsored this? Human trafficking? (laughs) Like, who the fuck was the sponsor of this ad? No, Will Alexander, I have better things to do with my life and time. Um, but thank you for the biddies as always Alexander and the creative writing exercise but no as a serious question no I'll be passing on that one um oh Wyoming's first while we're talking while we're talking Wyoming has their first black sheriff what year is it again Anyway, Wyoming's first black sheriff fired a white deputy who had years of alleged racism on his record. And this made national news. I feel like I'm taking fucking crazy pills. Like, I really, I'm starting to feel that way. We're, we're burning books. We're banning and burning books. We're fucking, like, I, I. I would be afraid if I were him. I'd be afraid if I were him. Corey, miss me with that shit because I lived in the deep south for a number of years. Pass. Pass. (laughs) 
Basically, Viva. Basically. No, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. What's up, Alex? We are just talking about the fact that we're, like, banning and burning books. And Wyoming has their first black fucking um, sheriff. And he fired a racist white deputy and it made national news. I... I got nothing. I got nothing. Um, Texas is really going at it. Texas is really fucking going at it with the books thing. Um, Texas is just purging. Like 50 books at a pop. God, I hope so. Amorous. God, I hope so. That'd be hilarious. Uh, let's see. What, oh, some of the ones that some of the some of the ones that'll be pulling be pulled. Here we go. <clears throat> Drama. Um, this is Spring Ban Branch Independent School District in Houston. It's a graphic novel which features gay and bisexual characters. Uh, parents. Uh, the parents. Uh, uh, had concerns that it might lead young students to question their sexual orientation when they don't even comprehend what it means. Uh, when Wilma Rudolph played basketball, um, Dallas suburb, uh, Prosper, it's a Dallas suburb. It's an illustrated children's book that touches on the racism that Olympian Wilma Rudolph experienced growing up in Tennessee in the 1940s. Uh, they stated that it should be removed from school libraries because it opines prejudice based on race. Soak up that irony. Lawn Boy. Um, Plano, Texas. Always a great place. Stop by Plano. Definitely a progressive location. It's a coming-of-age novel about a Mexican-American character's journey to understand his own sexuality and ethnic identity. It should be banned because it contains profanity, pornography, gambling, and homosexuality. The parents claim that the book encourages admiring people with low morals and values and hate of other people. Better Nate than ever. Uh, Leander, Austin suburb. You know, Austin, the progressive part of Texas. It's as, it has a subplot about a teenager who's starting to notice his attraction to other boys. Books should discuss sensitive and... Uh, uh, oh, uh, books should not discuss sensitive, controversial topics such as gender or sexuality. Five, six, seven, Nate. Is this the same? It's a continuation. Leander again. Um, gender identity and sexuality. The Bluest Eye. Nobel Prize winning author Toni Morrison um, should be banned from schools because it includes a graphic description of rape. Out of Darkness, novel about 1930s East Texas romance between a Mexican-American Mexican girl and a black boy. Quote, isn't suitable for teens. Ghost Boys, Houston, reading this novel about a black boy killed by police might cause white children who attend Spring Branch I Independent School District to feel ashamed based on the color of their skin. Later Gator, told entirely through instant messages among three high school students, this novel has no place in schools, according to parents of the Dallas suburb McKinney, because it contains graphic descriptions of oral sex, among other explicit passages. Me and Earl, the dying girl, um, parents in Houston suburb of Katy, Texas, um, wanted this book removed because of it chronicles a relationship between a teen boy and teen girl with leukemia. And since it includes obscene language and could lead to students becoming over-sexualized and objectified. White Bird, a wonder story. 
This is Spring Branch again. A graphic novel about a Jewish teen living in France after Nazis seized power. Banned because it's biased and could lead to a skewing of a young child's mind. Uh, in fact, Commodity, Bugs Life is a um, very much a critique of hierarchical power structures in capitalism. Bugs Life is super based. Go back and watch it. It's super fucking based. Ground Zero, a novel of 9-11. Prosper, Texas. Tells the story of 9-11 and its aftermath from the doing perspectives of an American boy and an Afghan girl. It should be removed from schools because it depicts American soldiers as callous, evil, and terrorists. Because the author mentions racial or ethnic identities of characters. Done and done. <laughs> Alex, I just saw your meme. Ah, uh, let's see. Fun Home, a family tragicomedy. An illustrated memoir which recounts the author's coming of age as a lesbian. Unsuitable for schools, according to Birdsville School District, because it includes graphic descriptions of sexual violence. She was raped. Jack of Hearts in other parts. Katie, Texas again. Um, 17 year old it book is about 17 year old gay student who has sex and isn't ashamed of it. We cannot unread this type of content and I would like to protect my kids hearts and minds from this. City of Thieves, a parent in Antonio uh, asked the Northside Independent School to ban this work of historical fiction set during the Nazi siege of Leningrad because it contains pornographic imagery that is not suited for the majority of readers unless you're into that the, t the parent what are my most controversial radical views well i mean radical do you, do you know what radical means like oxford english dic dictionary definition fundamental or systemic change especially that within a system uh within a political system fundamental or systemic change you know what i'm telling you that right it's all fucked Basically, it all needs overhauling. Um, but you want one of my most radical ones? Guns for everybody but cops. Everybody in society should have a right to bear firearms, except the police. There you go. There's one. Am I memeing? No, I'm really not. I actually mean that. And my family owned and ran firearms training facilities. And I am very well trained with firearms, have trained with military and ex-military, and I have seen and trained police officers. I am serious when I say this. Guns for everybody but cops. There you go. Uh, back to the list. Gender Queer, illustrated memoir by a non-binary author. You can imagine why they wanted that gone. This one summer... Um, this one's Birdville, uh, Texas, graphic novel, LGBTQ, We Are the Ants, coming of age novel about a gay teenager, Breakaways, Keller and Spring Branch uh, school districts wanted this gone, it, because it features transgender characters, just, just that, just that, All Boys Aren't Blue, Queer black author flagged for removal because it contains descriptions of molestation. Perks of being a wallflower. Coming of age novel includes descriptions of homosexuality and date rape and masturbation. It had to go. Oh, oh, this one's just full on mask off. I love this one. This is great. The, the fact that they're banning this one is just, oh, this is beautiful. This is just delicious. Michelle Obama, Political Icon by Heather E. Schwartz. 
It is a children's biography of the former first lady banned at every grade level because it unfairly depicts former President Trump as a bully. Oh, and it gave the impression that if you sound like a white girl, you should be ashamed of yourself. <clears throat> Just mask off. Just full on. I love it. It's great. I like to know who my racists are. I like to know who my transphobes are. I like to know who my homophobes are. I want to know who my bigots are in society. Just, just tell me. It's so much easier. It's so much easier when they stand up and say, I'm a fucking racist. Cool. Thanks. I, I, you know, it, there's, yeah. Um, okay. Ah, oh, back to the list. Stamped, racism, anti-racism, and you. Young adult adaptation of Stamped from the Beginning, a National Book Award-winning historical examination of racism, flagged for removal in Katy, Texas. Quote, the book is littered with completely fabricated and conspiracy theory views on history that make it seem as if all historical events in the past were a result of racism. New Kid. I've heard about this one. A K uh, uh, this one's Katy, Texas as well. It's a graphic novel about a black seventh grader at a mostly white school. Um... It includes references to microaggressions and is about critical race theory, which is forbidden by Texas law. Class Act. Katie, Texas again. Graphic novel, second in a series. Uh, removed from schools because it will make white children feel guilty and kids will be brainwashed that one race is superior to the others. Projection much, homie? Uh, yeah, except Spear, we're actually doing something right now. And, well, the show doesn't revolve around you. So how about when I get to the bottom of this list, you bring that back up? Cool. Salvage the Bones. It's a book about the plight of black working class family as they prepare for Hurricane Ka uh, Katrina. A parent in Katy, Texas wrote, I object to the explicit description of a teenage girl having sex with boys in her social group. Woke. A young poet's call to justice. This is Grapevine, another Dallas suburb. This one is a collection of poems by women of color on topics relating to social justice, activism, and discrimination. And it has been marked for potential ban because in the words of one father, white, in Grapevine, Texas, it promotes terrorism. I want to read that one. I want to read that one. I guarantee it's like, get out and protest. Not My Idea, a book about whiteness. This one is Eanes Independent School District, also Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, remember, arguably the most progressive locale in all of Texas. Keep in mind, we've had a few from Austin. Eanes Independent. It's a book about racial justice, arguing that no books should promote the Black Lives Matter movement that uh, and no books that uh, talk about BLM should, quote, ever be available to children. Uh, how to be an anti-racist. Hmm, duly noted, Checker. Uh, how to be an anti-racist. The specific reason marked on this book was resisting racism replaced with copies of the Bible. Just 
just a small notation. Yeah. Yeah. A good kind of trouble means, uh, uh, again, um, this is about a 12-year-old girl who gets, Ill- uh, gets involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. Quote, it might cause a white chi- a child to feel confusion or distress. We rise, we resist, we raise our voices. Illustrated collection of poems and essays about overcoming prejudice and racism shouldn't be allowed in schools, according to the Eanes School District, because, quote, it promotes discrimination. On the bright side, I'm now the girlfriend of a sex god. It's a hell of a title, I'll give it that. This is Denton, North Dallas. It's a teen romance, arguing that it should be replaced with books that have humor that do not promote sexual activity. Kite Runner. It's an, uh, apparently an acclaimed novel about an unlikely friendship between a wealthy Afghan boy and the son of his father's servant, flagged for removal in Birdville, Texas, because it depicts the rape and sexual exploitation of minors. It's perfectly normal. This is Birdville again. Um, it's an illustrated guide to puberty, sex, and sexual health, so we know why they don't want that one involved. Um, Beyond Magenta. Oh, pff, fuck this. I, do I need to list why? Beyond Magenta, transgender teens speak out. Monday is not coming. This novel, which focuses on the unexplained disappearance of a black teen, includes explicit language about sex, which is the basis for Birdville again, requesting to have it removed from all all of their school libraries. More happy than not. LGBTQ storylines, explicit language, flagged for removal in the Fort Worth suburb of Keller. George. This book, lauded for its portrayal of a transgender child, is one of dozens of library books that have been flagged for removal again in Keller. What Girls Are Made Of. This young adult novel, a National Book Award finalist, mentions abortion, includes multiple descriptions of sex, and again, see Keller School District. I Am Jazz. Oh, I know what this one is. Didn't, didn't Jazz get a fucking TV show? Um, illustrated children's book about a transgender child built uh, based on the real-life experiences of one of its authors. Yes. Still has a TV show. Yeah, that's... I, I consider I consider all those TV shows abusive, by the way. I consider those TV shows child abuse. Um, has nothing to do with transgenderism. It has everything to do with whoring your child out for, for views. Um, so you've been publicly shamed. This book, in which the author interviews people who have been shamed on the internet, touches on sensitive subjects, including rape and suicide. Again, C. Keller School District. King and the Dragonflies, winner of the 2020 National Book Award for Young People's Literature, deals a uh, th- novel that deals with themes such as grief, love, family, friendship, racism, and sexuality. Uh, again, Keller. Uh, Go with the Flow. Graphic novel, which uh, the school library journal praised for its message that periods not need be a dirty secret. Oh, we know how the fucking Christian conservatives feel about uh, empowering women and women's health and menstruation and just the entire concept of a burgeoning and blossoming sexuality within girls slash women. Oh, yes, we know how they feel about that one. (sighs) <sighs> Last night at the Telegraph Club, a uh, lesbian romance set in 1954 between a Chinese-American teen and a white classmate. Again, interracial. Lesbian. Hey, rabbit. Yeah, we're just going through. We're going through some of the books that Texas is banning. And we're just going, just short descri- titles and short description in case anybody wants to form a shopping list. You know, uh, weird girl and what's his name? 
tracing the story of a 17-year-old girl who's beginning to question her sexual orientation. Again, Keller, Texas. Flamer. School Library Journal said this graphic novel about a boy wrestling with his sexuality at summer camp is an essential book that shows readers that they're never alone in their struggles. Milk and Honey, a collection of poetry and short stories about violence, abuse, love, loss, and femininity. There you go. You know why that. A Court of Mist and Fury, second in a series of young adult fantasy novels. Oh, no. Fantasy. You know why they want to get rid of fantasy novels, though? Because it's a direct... The, the entire genre of fantasy fiction is in direct competition with the Bible, right? They're not big fans of competition in that in that arena. So, you know, of course, they're, you know, like, eh, enough of that fantasy shit. You might take away some of our market share for our fantasy. 47. This novel about a young slave boy who becomes swept up in the struggle for his own liberation. Ooh, well, there we go. Fucking can't be talking about slavery. Slavery didn't happen. Slavery didn't happen. That's that's critical race theory, and it's illegal to talk about that in Texas. So just saying, just saying, like slavery, it just it just didn't happen if you're in Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, and probably Virginia at this point. Um Girls Like Us. This novel, which includes descriptions of sexual abuse. Oh, there you go. We know Christian. We know how fundamentalist Christians and the orthodoxy loves to sexually abuse their young, uh, young girls and boys. So, you know, descriptions of sexual abuse of minors that might inform minors as to their actual rights and the, pa uh, and the mechanisms in society they can use to protect themselves against these predator fucks. Well, that's got to go, too. Rat, rabbit. I love the one fucking bookstore dude that's in ten in Tennessee that said if you send him a request um, in Tennessee, he'll send you a copy of Mouse for Free. Just if there's anybody in Tennessee, there is a Tennessee bookstore owner who has straight up said anybody in Tennessee who wants the book Mouse, just hit me up. I'll send you one. Oh, dude, librarians are the most based people in our society. I love librarians. Librarians are the coolest fucking people. By the way, it takes a master's degree to be a librarian in most places. Dude, librarians are highly educated people. They're master researchers in, in their own regard. Uh, and it, it, yeah, I love librarians. They're some of the coolest fucking people walking around. Ah, uh, What's up? Uh, I hate to imagine all the abuse that would have been reported if the kids knew they were being abused. I know, right? Commodity. Um, so there's 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 a list of 50 books. Um, if you want the list, it's in shared content as well. Um, so you can you can go and shop if you if you happen to live in one of these absolute shithole ass backwards fucking just reductive states. Um, hey, cracks. Then, you know, I, again, if you've got nieces and nephews or, you know, cousins or, you know, just the neighbor's kid. Just saying. Now you know what books to buy. I, I don't know what to say about this shit. I, I legitimately don't. Like I said when I started that list. I, I, I'm sort of at a loss right now. We're, we're burning books. We're burning books, right? Like I live in a country that's burning books. Luckily not my part of the country, but it's, it, it's, it's fucking really, really shitty to be an American right now.
Hey, Chase's channel, take your take your shitty fucking like limerick slash fuck. It's not even a limerick. Take your shitty fucking joke elsewhere. Seriously, like what are you it, honestly Ch Chase's channel? We're an 18 over community. If you're fucking under 18, go somewhere else because that was like some shit a middle school would would drop. So either grow the fuck up, get with the program, or get the fuck out. Because right now... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm dealing with book burnings right now. I'm dealing with a fucking topic of a nation state and states within that nation state where we are literally heading down the path of book burnings. You're right. You're right. My, my sense of humor is a little... A little fucking hindered right now. Oh, and then you go for the ad hom. Oh, you look like a meth head. Congratulations. Yeah. So, you gonna fuck off? Or am I gonna have to remove you? How's it gonna be? You gonna grow the fuck up and get with the program? You gonna fuck off? Twelve, fourteen, any bets? Maybe puberty. Maybe puberty. Maybe. I don't think he's eighteen though. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Some of you have seen me with my shirt off. Definitely not meth head territory. Meth heads can't maintain a, a dietary standard and a um, workout regimen like I do. So either way. Um, cool. Let's just report your account in a chat message. Let's see. Let's go that. Let's see. There we go. And banned. Anyway. Um. Anyway, where was I? Oh. Well, how is restoring the soul of the country going for y'all? Uh, for two is pretty well. Pretty well. As you can see, our fellow Americans are absolutely fucking dumb. Um, half of them are poor, over half are barely educated, barely literate. Um, about half of, uh, about 25% of the remaining 50%, um, sorry, about 50% of the remaining 50%, so 25% in total, um, are nothing more than like meme lords um, who would rather just watch it burn around them because frankly they've been so disempowered that all they have is sitting on 4chan all day and punishing their pathetically small puds um and then um we've got the other 25 percent that are well frankly just check the fuck out Oh, GL. I mean, it's fair. What we got? Oh, and then let's see. Fucking Cassidy. What happened today? Oh. You know what? Hang on, watch this. There. Anyway. 
I mean, I could make a nine egg breakfast work, Corey. Uh, could they be banning books because they can't read them anyway? I mean, functionally, yeah, they're functionally fucking illiterate. The majority of Americans read at a lower than sixth grade level. It's terrifying. 54%. Um, so... Uh, the butter's out. It's their go-to for fucking skinny because usually, uh, uh, Alex, they're fucking four, they're like three, four, five hundred pounds, right? Like it's, it's a pudgy Cheeto finger, like Cheeto finger cover motherfucker sitting there like uh, behind his, uh, gaming rig that hasn't been out of his computer chair for, oh, well here, hang on. I can, I can just demonstrate. This. This. <laughs> so anything skinnier than that is a method for them. There you go, Karina. I paused that on the way back down. <laughs> oh, rabbit. I don't eat eggs. That's, I said I could make nine eggs work in my diet. I don't eat eggs, just outright. We'll just cover that right now. Um, I, that's, they're too inflammatory as, a, a, as an item. Jesus Christ, Amaris. Uh, Cassie, no, I don't eat eggs. Just outright. Um, yeah, it's... I mean, y'all... Um, yeah, I, I use goat's milk, whey, pr uh, protein isolate, um, brown rice, protein isolate, uh, pea protein isolate, um, and then just bison and chicken and sometimes turkey and occasionally, um, some like scallops territory. If I feel like treating myself. Um, so yeah, I don't. Six eggs don't have that much protein in them, which is hilarious. No, fucking raw egg is just gimmick with her. Um, eggs don't have that much protein in them to start with. That was a fucking ad campaign shit. Um, One large, one large egg has 6.3 grams of protein. What's up, nine binary? Four months. Thank you for teaching me about anarchism with humor and patience. You're welcome, non-binary, and thank you. Um, it's, it, yeah, like, there's just, it's not that concentrated of a protein source, really. Um, you'd be better off with cricket protein. The, the, uh, per weight, um, protein content, um, is all oh, Jesus Christ thank you non-binary um the per we uh the per weight uh, protein content in cricket pro in cricket powder is far and above what you'll get out of eggs beef chicken so yeah but yeah I, like I said, I don't need eggs. 
Mealworms. Mealworms are in that category of highly concentrated protein sources. Um, for sure. Jesus Christ. Today is the Columbia Space Shuttle disaster. Hmm. Uh... I got pea protein. I make protein bars and shit too. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I started incorporating the, uh, I, I started incorporating cricket protein a few months back. Um, rabbit, since you used to do it, um, you, you'd be interested to note, um, I have a full cut six pack. I have gained three inches on my biceps. My forearms are larger. My thighs are larger. My calves are larger because I don't fucking skip leg day unlike has. Um, but the goal for this year is to, I don't think I'm going to hit the goal, but the goal for this year is to get up another 20 pounds in lean muscle. I want to, I want to hit, I want to hit 160 just cut. I don't have, I don't have shit for fat on me anymore. I actually cut I got, I dropped two pounds um, within the last few weeks. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I dropped a couple of a uh, couple of pounds in the last two week, uh, two weeks. Um, fucking uh, um, fat, because I was doing uh, a cut, and I um, rabbit, uh, fucking nicely done, sir. You sporting that Apollo's belt, rabbit? I have always had it. I've never not had it. Um, I've got the V cut, like no matter what. Um, I'm just genetically predisposed to it, um, but it is most assuredly there f now. Um, if you want to see rabbit, you can go to uh, Enrico Meatheads and scroll up a ways, and you can see a photo of me without my shirt on, um, which is a couple of weeks ago. And I got to tell you, it's even more cut now. Um, yeah, like I, I, we're talking core legs, fucking weights multiple times a week, if not every day a week, plus a rest day sort of situation. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm chasing it, my man. I'm chasing it. Um, so yeah, like, you know, figured you used to do it. You'd be on uh, this day. we we'll Darwin, uh, on this day in working class history, February 2nd, 1821, more than 500 miners gathered in Dolly and marched to protest pay cuts and increase, uh, increasing poverty. Um, the march escalated, culminating in a pitched battle with the local yeomanry that left two miners dead. Cutting board kind of cut. Uh, I mean, imagine me losing two pounds of fat. I didn't have it to start with. It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. Fucking, um, Jesus Christ. It feels weird doing this. Uh, keep in mind rabbit. I'm not pumped right now, but I'm going to fucking, I'm going to stretch here. Just it's coming along. It's coming along. Like on my frame, every, every ounce, every gram of muscle is apparent. If, if I add muscle, you can see it. Um, it's just one of those things. Oh. So, yeah. Fucking my days. Uh, which ones? <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Um, my, my my day is basically re revolves around meal planning and workouts that's basically it. you know rabbit knows rabbit knows like that's how it goes that's how it goes um karina i figured i figured if she was actually a, a real libertarian then that was probably the the underpinnings to it is like well that's libertarian philosophy 101 um 
Oh, rabbit, dude! the The left forearm is like it, it's the it's tendonitis territory, right? It's not the muscle itself; it's it's the tendon. And so I just you know sort of get a good fucking occasional, relax it, make sure it's you know massaged out, and I just work around it as best I can. I've I've altered, so I'm not um I'm not doing a, a a straight lift. I always make sure I'm at an angle or doing a hammer curl that sort of thing. So I'm not activating that way instead. And you know you you do what you got to do, right? Um, fucking. There's the there's the knee brace. <laughs> right like there's the fucking knee brace and i've got i've got the uh the the lifters uh lifters gloves with the wrist uh supports as well um so yeah so i you know you do what you got to do thinking about maybe getting um some of the like lifting hooks things as well so i don't have to support it with my fingers as much See if I can't take the, some of the load off. If you've got any trips, uh, tips and tricks, Rabbit, I will fucking take them. Um, I got eggs off <laughs> Craigslist and hatched a few. That's that's actually really fucking cool, Sunrise. Um, yeah, I'm taller and boxing at 160 is a major task. Uh, Corey, how tall are you? I'm 5'11"-ish. Um... Hey, Krita, you know what? Fucking, who gives about the other shit? As long as she accepts you for you, it's all that matters. Um, yeah. Uh, oh. There we go. Uh, 6 3. Oh, yeah. If your nerves can take it, the cold bath, hot bath alternating generally does work. If you get the clench, your temperature is too far apart. I did my first. I did my first cold shower, hot shower cycle last week, Rabbit. Last week. Um, I, I know I've been needing to do it. But I'm a pussy. <laughs> I straight up was doing like Vim Hof fucking breathing exercises up in that bitch. I was, I was, dude, that's, dude, that's a fucking thing. Coming off a fucking workout, even with the elevated body temperature and the, like increased metabolic rates and shit like that. Dude, that's, that's a motherfucker. Um, I mean, it never actually gets better. Gah, yeah. <laughs> That's not good to hear, Rabbit. It's not good to hear. <laughs> but good to know it works. Good to know it works. Thank you, Rabbit. Um, I know I need to do it. I know I need to do it. I just... I'm a, I'm a coward. <laughs> I'm a coward. <laughs> um... Oh, that doesn't bother me, Rabbit. It's just generally the fucking... I, dude, it's just miserable being that fucking... Like, being in the snow is not difficult. Being in cold air is not difficult. Being in cold water is a task. I mean, thermodynamics, you know, blah, 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 blah. Alex saying the fucking... He um, got forced into ice baths after rugby training and got used to it. Well, maybe, Alex, have you considered you're just broken in the head? <sighs> um, you, was the you were the lunatic rat that liked ice baths after soccer. Okay, okay. I'm starting to see a pattern here. <laughs> uh, 
whomst among us isn't deeply brain broken. <laughs> Fair enough, Alex. Um, Viva me, I'm fine. <laughs> you sure you are, Viva. I'm not I'm not that brain broken. Um Oh, speaking of Nestle, I saw somebody um Yeah, I have that image. Uh somebody posted from their college class. Uh their management professor listed Nestle as a good example of a company that practices corporate social responsibility today. Hang on. Economic and social goals come together in companies that practice enlightened self-interest. The company's self-interest in the long term to provide true value to its customers, help for its employees to grow and behave responsibly. Example, Nestle. <laughs> you know. Because when I think of, like, responsible, uh, socially responsible companies, I think Nestle. Oh, Sunrays, they're stealing water everywhere. Not just, just, not just Maine. <sighs> Genocide's a corporate responsible thing. What? Hey. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to talk about? Mm. I mean, fucking Truckistan is still going. <laughs> it's okay, mister. It's okay. Um, well then, maybe I can get used to it because the cold doesn't really bother me. It's the wet cold. Wet cold bothers me. It's, it, dry colds don't bother me at all. I've been in, uh, I've been in cryo chambers a couple of times. Um, that, that doesn't bother me. I wish I had a home base cryo chamber. That way I didn't have to do the fucking dunk. Oh, I mean, let's face it, a good portion of the <laughs> consumer goods that are supplied in mass around the world are all based in slavery. Electronics. Chocolate, coffee, water. You know. So. <laughs> yeah, that that is freakish behavior, Alex. That's that is a freakish behavior. Um Uh yes, non binary. Um I hate to break it to you, but you weren't the first one to post it. It was posted actually a few days prior. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, truck is Dan. Uh,
Anyway, so does anyone want to know the interaction I just had on YouTube? I've been, when you see me type like that, somebody resp replied on one of my videos, who did you vote for? And I said, why not ask on stream instead, since we're streaming? Thanks, I just checked you're not streaming or not least streaming on YouTube. I search, I'm search. i searching for politically radical channels. So I left him the link to the Twitch stream. I mean, Twitch is for kids. No, thank you. Can you just answer, please? Who did you vote for? And I said, nope. Not with a sadly closed-minded attitude like that. Sorry. Have a good one, and better luck with your future interactions with people. Maybe consider leaving such immature biases at the door next time. So... Yeah, just a just a little interaction I just had over on on YouTube. What is wrong with people? <laughs> like, are 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 people okay? I feel like people aren't okay. Oh, I mean, rabbit. That's oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, Viva and Rabbit both. Like, yeah, like, I mean. I mean, not to be that guy, but didn't AOC fucking stream on Twitch? Like, I mean, at a certain point. Yeah, that's not a, that's not healthy, Burger. And played Among Us. Oh, Jesus, people are definitely not okay. <sighs> yeah, in 2022, nah, just not okay, man. <laughs> um, all right. So I was thinking about reading some more Bob Black. I I know I mentioned this the other day. I was thinking about reading some more Bob Black. I wanna I wanna get through I wanna get through the like smokestack lightning section. Uh, into the no future workplace section of uh, instead of work. Um, and then maybe even the what's wrong with this picture, which is a neo futurist vision of the decline of work. Um, yo, I know for twos. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, the person's username was we need critical thinking. So if you want a, a touch of irony for your for your tea there. Rabbit said, oh, okay, V's right, 15. Uh, taking some speculative design classes, our professor showed us two environmental documentaries in two days. All right, perfect, all right. Um, no, Corey, I don't think so. Post, post in the comments. Like, just say something in the comments. But, no. I suppose if, um... Rabbit, I suppose a... a, a hmm... There's got to be a way to dis... Yeah, I suppose. I'm thinking reverse engineering, but even then it's still speculative because you don't know the actual design. No, I, oh, uh, language change. A building should be called a built. Yeah, that that's a change in English we need to make. That's 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 a building. That's a built. Yeah. What's your username on there, Corey? Yeah, that's. Yeah, no, I rabbit. I get it.
I mean, I can check, but I haven't banned anybody recently, so... Unless you got fucking, you got your account hammered by Discord themselves, then that would affect all of it. Every day I learn more of why English is an abomination. How do I go to the world and... Alright. Uh, how do I go to the world and love all the things climate can't change? Oh, Jesus. Hmm. Jesus Christ, Mr. Sir. Um, yeah, it's fine. Fucking, I mean, it'd be easier just to post in the comments, but, I mean. Anyway, all right. Let's do some reading. Let's do some reading. English is glorious. One of the few languages that makes up foreign sounding words specifically to bitch about how there's too many foreign sounding words. Um, oh. All right. Let's record this, I suppose, too. <clears throat> Y'all are cool with some theory reading, right? I mean, I'll ask you. We could do something else. We could play a video game, even. Um, we could do really anything. Doesn't really matter. But I've been wanting to get through some of this. So. What you reading for? God, that fucking. Dude, the last time we read out of this book was when that Friday. Um, where we had all those fucking idiots. What are you, what are you reading? Books are lame. Fucking... Um, fucking, yeah, we, oh, God, it was just painful that Friday. Oh, God, we had, like, a dozen fucking just dummies, like, fucking, I mean, somebody literally complaining about people knowing things. God, that was a painful fucking stream. Oh, I'm having flashbacks. I'm having flashbacks. It was my Vietnam. Um... All right. Bob Black is a revolutionary, smirks David Ramsey Steele. Quote, the way Gene Autry was a cowboy. The Abolition of Breathing, Liberty, March 1989. A Marxist turned libertarian. Steele is miffed that to me his forward progress is just walking in circles. Steele's is the longest, harshest review ever received by the abolition of work and other essays. And while no nit to my discredit is too small for him to pick, my critique of work is the major target. Steele tries not merely to refute me, but to make me out to be a gesticulating clown by turns infantile and wicked. They're probably synonyms for Steele. Quote, I'm joking and serious. He quotes me in opening. But if I'm a sometimes successful joker, I'm serious only in the sense that a child wailing for more candy is serious. Steele wants to bomb me back into the Stone Age, just where my ideas, he warns, would land the handful of humans who might survive the abolition of work. For a fact, I am, as accused, joking and serious, because he is neither. Steele is fated never to understand me. Metaphor, irony, and absurdity play, and I do mean play, a part in my expression, which is, for Steele, at best, cause for confusion. At worst, a pretext for defamation. I write in more than one way, and I should be read in more than one way. My book is stereoscopic. Steele complains I failed to make a coherent case for some kind of change in the way society is run, but I did not, as he implies, make an incoherent case for what he wants. New masters. I made a coherent case for what I want, a society that isn't run at all. 
When a libertarian who ordinarily extols the virtue of selfishness calls me self-indulgent, he shows he's prepared to sacrifice secondary values if need be to meet a threat of foundational dimensions. Emotionally, the review is equivalent to an air raid siren. Do not repeat. Do not take this half-educated Montebank uh, seriously. Steal careens crazily between accusing me of snobbery and, as when he calls me half-educated, exhibiting it himself. If with three academic degrees I am half-educated, how many does Steele have? Six? Who cares? Most of what I write I never learned in school. Certainly not the Austrian school. Steele says I am out of my depth in economics oblivious to my vantage point exterior and, if all goes well, posterior to the dismal science of scarcity. I never dip into the malarial pool, not at any depth. I drain it. I'm not playing Steele's capitalist game. I'm proposing a new game. I'm not a bad economist, for I'm not an economist at all. Freedom ends where economics begins. Human life was originally pre-economic. I've tried to explore whether it could become post-economic, that is to say, free. The greatest obstacle, it seems to me, and Steele never does overtly disagree, is the institution of work, especially, I think, in its industrial mode. Like most libertarians, Steele so far prefers industry to liberty that even to pose the problem of work as a problem of liberty throws a scare into him. Much toil must have gone into Steele's only serious criticism that does not depend on a previous faith in laissez-faire economics. The attempt to reveal my definitions of work and play as confused and contradictory, he quotes my book, pages 18 to 19, thusly. Work is production enforced by economic or political means, by the carrot or the stick. Work is never done for its own sake. It's done on account of some product or output that the worker, or more often than somebody else, uh, more often, somebody else gets out of it. Steele comments, quote, <clears throat> This seems at first to say that work is work you do if it, uh, it because you have to or because you will be paid for it. Then it seems to say something different, that work is work if you do it for the sake of an anticipated goal. The first sentence is roughly accurate. The second is not. All human action is purposive as our Austrian school marm would be the first to agree, which is to say all human action is goal-directed. Work, play, everything. Play, too, has an anticipated goal, but not the same one work has. The purpose of play is process. The purpose of work is product, in a broad sense. Work, unlike play, is done not for the intrinsic satisfaction of the activity, but for something separate, resulting from it, which may be a paycheck or maybe just no whipping tonight. The anticipated goal of play is the pleasure of the action. Steele, not me, is confused when he glosses my definitions to collapse the very distinctions I set out to draw with them. Elsewhere in this little essay, I offer an abbreviated definition of work as forced labor or compulsory production. Predictably, a libertarian like Steele contends that the economic carrot is not coercive, as is the political stick. I didn't argue against this unreasonable opinion because only libertarians and economists hold it, and there are just not enough of them to justify cluttering up the majestic breadth and sweep of my argument with too many asides. Steele, I notice, doesn't argue about it either. All this proves is that I'm not a libertarian. A superfluous labor, since I make that abundantly clear in another essay in the book, The Libertarian as Conservative. On this point, Aristotle, a philosopher much admired by libertarians, is on my side. He argues that the life of money-making is undertaken under compulsion. Believe it, dude, but even if Ari and I are mistaken, we're neither confused nor confusing. There's nothing inconsistent or incoherent about my definitions, nor do they contradict ordinary usage. A libertarian, or anybody else who can't understand what I'm saying, is either playing dumb, or really is. People who are maybe not even half-educated understand what I say about work. The first time in my essay, uh, the first time my essay was published in pamphlet form, the printer, the boss, reported it got quiet when he took the manuscript into the back room. He also thought the workers had run off some extra copies for themselves. 
Only miseducated intellectuals ever have any trouble puzzling out what's wrong with work. Work is by definition productive and by definition compulsory. In my sense, which embraces toil without which one is denied the means of survival in our society, must often but not always be a wage labor. Play is by definition intrinsically gratifying and by definition voluntary. Play is not by definition either productive or unproductive. Although it has been wrongfully defined by Huizinga and de Coven's, among others, as necessarily inconsequential, it does not have to be. Whether play has consequences, something that continues when the play is over, depends on what is at stake. Does poker cease to be play if you bet on the outcome? Maybe yes, maybe no. My proposal is to combine the best part, in fact the only good part of work, the production of use values, with the best of play, which I take to be every aspect of play. It's freedom, and it's fun, it's voluntariness, and it's intrinsic gratification, shorn of the Calvinist connotations of frivolity and self-indulgence that the masters of work echoed by the likes of uh, Johann Heusinger and David Ramsey Steele have labored to attach to the free play. Is this so hard to understand? If pro if productive play is possible, so too is the abolition of work. Fully educated as he must be, Steele thus flubs my discursive definitions of work. I am no, uh, I am in no, um, Jesus Christ, I am no define your terms objectivist. I announce definitions as, openly, uh, as opening gambits, as approximations to be enriched and refined by illustration and elaboration. Work is production elicited by in extrinsic inducements like money or violence. Whether my several variant formulations have the same sense or meaning, they have. In Frehe's uh, terminology, the same reference, they designate this same phenomenon. Ah, uh, picked up a little book learning after all. According to Steele, what I call the abolition of work is just avant-garde job enrichment. I display no interest in this body of theory because it has none for me. I am as familiar with it as I care to be. Job enrichment is a top-down conservative reform by which employers gimmick up jobs to make them seem more interesting without relinquishing their control over them, much less superseding them. A job, any job. An exclusive productive assignment is, as abolition makes clear, an aggravated condition of work. Almost always it stultifies the plurality of our potential powers. Even activities with some inherent satisfaction as freely chosen pastimes lose much of their ludic kick when reduced to jobs in supervised, timed, exclusive occupations worked in return for enough money to live on. Jobs are the worst kind of work and the first that must be deranged. For me, the job enrichment literature is significant in only one way. It proves that workers are sufficiently anti-work, something that Steele denies, that management is concerned to muffle or misdirect their resentments. Steele, in misunderstanding all of this, misunderstands everything. <clears throat> A libertarian misunderstanding everything? Mm, shocking. Uh, <laughs> seven lost for theory reading so far. I have never denied the need for what the economists call production. I've called for its ruthless auditing. How much of this production is worth suffering to produce and for the transformation of what seems needful into productive play? Two words to be tattooed on Steele's forehead as they explain everything about me he dislikes or misunderstands. Productive play. Plenty of unproductive play too, I hope. In fact, ideally an arrangement in which there is no point keeping track of which is which. But play as paradigmatic, productive play. Activities that are, for the time and the circumstances and the individual, individual engaged in them, intrinsically gratifying play. Yet which, in their totality, produce the means of life for all. The most necessary functions, such as those of the primary sector, food production, already have their Luddic counterparts in hunting and gardening, in hobbies. Not only are my categories coherent, they're already operative in every society. 
happily. Not many people are so economically sophisticated that they cannot understand me. If Steele really believes there can be no bread without bakeries and no sex without brothels, I pity him. Whenever Steele strays into anthropology, he is out of his depth. In primitive affluence, I drew attention to the buffoonery of his portrait of prehistoric political economy. A few cavemen on loan from the far side, squatting round the campfire, shooting the shit for lack of anything better to do, and every so often carving a steak out of an increasingly putrid carcass till the meat runs out. Racism, this ridiculous, is sublime, as shockingly silly as if today we put on an old minstrel show, blackface and all. The hunters didn't do more work, he explains, because they saw little profit in it, because of their restricted options. For sure they saw no profit, because the concept would be meaningless to them. But their options weren't as restricted as ours are. If the San are any example, they normally enjoyed a choice we only get two weeks a year. Uh, two weeks a year. The choice whether to sleep in or get up and go to work. More than half the time, a San hunter stays home. What Steele considers options are not choices as to what to do, but choices as what to consume. When such hunter-gatherer societies encounter more technically advanced societies with a greater range of products, the hunter-gatherers generally manifest a powerful desire to get some of these products, even if this puts them to some trouble. This generalization, like the others, Steele ventures, only appears to be empirical. In fact, it's a, de uh, it's a deduction from an economic model that assumed away from the start any possibility that anybody ever did or, uh, did or ever could act as anything else but a more or less well-informed rational maximizer. Historically, it's insupportable. While the hunter-gatherers and the horticulturalists and pastoralists often did take from the European toolkit, they wanted no part of the work subjugation system by which the tools were produced. The San liked to, uh, liked to turn barbed wire stolen from South African farmers into points more effective and more easily fashioned than those of stone, but they do not like to work in the diamond mines. Most of humankind, Steele supposes, has been practicing agriculture for several thousand years, having at some stage found this more productive than hunting. The at some stage betrays the contention for what it is, a deduction from the axioms, not historical reportage. Steele would have had, uh, would have had a cow if someone said, most of humankind has been practicing authoritarianism for several thousand years, having at some stage found that this more free, orderly, stable, satisfying than libertarianism. The parallelism is not fortuitous. Overwhelmingly, stateless societies are also classless, marketless, and substantially workless societies. Overwhelmingly, market societies are also statist, class-divided, work-ridden societies. Am I out of line in suggesting there just might be a challenge for libertarians in all this that is not fully met by Steele's red-baiting me? Steele's pseudo-factual contention assumes this, um, that the consequent that what everybody everywhere uh, wants is higher productivity. Although Steele characterizes my goal a little less inaccurately than usual as something like anarcho-communism or higher-stage communism— he remembers the jargon of his Marxist phase. It is Steele who sounds like the collectivist, reifying humankind as some a kind of organism that, at some stage, chose to go for the gold, to take up the hoe. Just when and where was this referendum held? Supposing that agricultural societies are more productive, of what, per capita, who says the surplus goes to the producers? Steele may no longer agree with what Engels said in The Origin of the Family, Private Property, and the State, but he surely remembers the issues raised there and cynically suppresses what he knows, but he intellectually impoverished libertarian readership doesn't. Peasants produced more, working a lot harder to do it, but consumed less. The wealth they produced could be stored, sold, and stolen, taxed, and taken away by the kings, nobles, and priests. Since it could be in time, it was, at some stage, what was possible became, uh, became actual. The state and agricultural, the parasite and its host. The rest is literally history. 
If agriculture and the industri industrial society that emerge from it mark stages in the progress, uh, progress of liberty, we should expect that the oldest agricultural civiliz uh, civilizations, now busily industrializing, are in the vanguard of freedom. One stretch of country enjoyed the blessings of civilization twice as long as the next contender. I speak, of course, of Sumer, mo more recently known as Iraq. Almost as libertarian as the next civilization, still civilized, Egypt. Next, China. Need I say more? And once, uh, and once one or more of these agricultural slave societies got going, it expanded at the expense of its stateless, workless neighbors, whose small face-to-face -face societies, though psychologically gratifying and economically abundant, couldn't defeat the huge slave armies without turning into what they fought. Thus, they lost if they won like the nomadic armies of the Akkadians or Mongols or Turks. And they also lost, of course, if they lost. It had nothing to do with shopping around for the best deal. Steel fails, or pretends not, to understand why I ever brought up the primitives at all. It's not because I ever advocated a general return to the foraging way of life, if only because this uh, specialized stultification of the work we have to do unfits us for the vigorated, skilled play which produces the abundance the hunter-gatherers take for granted. Donald Trump worries a lot more about his economic future than a son mother worries about hers. A hunter-gatherer grows up in a habitat and learns to read it. I've quoted Adam Smith to the effect that the division of labor, even if it enhances productivity, diminishes the human personality. Now, if there's anything in my entire book a libertarian ideologue ought to answer or explain away, it's what the old Adam said about work. But Steele is careful to cover up this family scandal altogether. How many libertarians, for that matter, know that Smith was a Presbyterian minister? or that he advocated compulsory schooling precisely in order to counteract the debasing impact of work. Hunter-gatherers inform our understanding and embarrass libertarians in at least two ways. They operate the only known viable stateless societies, and they don't, except in occasional emergencies, work in any sense I've used the word. They, like we, must produce, but they don't have to work usually. They enjoy what they do on the relatively few occasions they are in the mood to do it, such as in an ethnographic record. Some primitives have no words to distinguish work and play because there's no reason to draw the distinction. We're the ones who need it in order to understand what's befallen us. Remarkably, I agree with Steele that we moderns cannot, quote, approximate that lifestyle very closely and still maintain advanced industry, though we could gradually approach it by reduced hours and more flexible work schedules and a few individuals, this is a dig at me, approximate it fairly closely by a combination of occasional work and living off handouts. Very well then, let's not maintain advanced industry. I want liberty. Steel, in liberty, prefers industry. I think the rag should rename itself industry if that's where its deepest loyalties lies. In abolition, I was deliberately agnostic about technology because I wanted to make the abolitionist case in the most universal terms. It's not necessary to agree with my actual opinion of industrial technology, very skeptical, to agree with my opposition to work, although it helps. Steele himself doesn't trouble to keep his accusations consistent. On one page, charging me with the ambitious missing of stamping out social cooperation and technology, thus effectuating the elimination of more than 95% of the world's population and the reduction of the remnant to a condition lower than the Stone Age, even lower. And on the next play, a page, saying, I repeat, the, ca the usual communist claims that automation can do almost anything. What Steele quaintly calls the Stone Age is the one million years in which all humans lived as hunter-gatherers, and we've already seen there is much to be said for a lifestyle most of us have sadly been unfitted for. For Steele, the usual communist claims serve the same divisionary function as the usual suspects does when rounded up. At least two science fiction writers who likely know a lot more about high tech than Steele does, the cyberpunks Bruce Sterling and Lewis Shiner, have drawn on the abolition of work in sketching zero work lifestyles that variously turn on technology. 
In Islands in the Net, Sterling extrapolates from several anti-work stances, the avant-garde job enrichment, as Steele would say, of the laid-back rhizome multinational. The selective post-punk high-tech of Singapore's anti-labor party and the post-agricultural guerrilla nomadism of the Tuareg insurgents in Africa. He incorporates a few of my phrases verbatim. Shiner in Slam recounts an individual anti-work odyssey expressly indebted to several Lupinex books, including a major inspiration for this novel, The Abolition of Work by Bob Black. If I'm skeptical about liberation through high tech, it's mainly because the techies aren't even exploring the possibility. And if they don't, who will? They're all worked up over nanotechnology as the as yet non-existent technology of molecular mecha mecha uh, mechanical manipulation, that a science fiction cliche, the matter transformer, without showing any interest in what work, if any, would be left to be done in such a hyper-tech civilization. So I find low-tech libera uh, liberation the more credible direction for now. It is false, but truer than most of what Steele attributes to me, that I think the tertiary or services sector is useless. I view most of the sector, now the largest, the way a libertarian views most of the government bureaucracy. Its dynamic is principally its own reproduction over time. The services sector services the services sector, as the state recreates the state. In I Was Robot, Ernest Mann carries forth a long utopian socialist tradition by recounting all the industries that exist only in order that they and others like them can continue to exist and expand. According to the Libertarian Litany, if any industry or institution is making a profit, it is satisfying once the origins of which are deliberately disregarded. But what we want, what we are capable of wanting, is relative to the forms of social organization. People want fast food because they have to hurry back to work. Because processed supermarket food doesn't taste much better anyway, because the nuclear family, for the dwindling minority who have even seen that much to go home to, is too small and too stressed to maintain much festivity in cooking and eating, and so forth. It's only people who can't get what they want who resign themselves to want more of what they can get. Since we cannot be friends and lovers, we wail for more candy. The libertarian is more upset than he admits when he drops his favorite elitist imposture. The lip uncurls, the cigarette holder falls, and the coolly rational anti-egalitarian Heinlein wannabe turns populist demagogue. In Scarface, Edgar G. Robinson snarls, work is for saps. In Liberty, David Ramsey Steele yelps that the saps are for the work. When it says what he wants to hear, vox populi is vox day after all. Not, however, when the talk turns to social security, farm subsidies, anti-drug laws, and all the other popular forms of state intervention. Steele assures us that workers prefer higher wages to job enrichment. This may well be true, and it certainly makes sense, since, as I've explained, job enrichment is not the abolition of work. It's only, rather a, it's only a rather ineffective form of psychological warfare. But how does he know this is true? Because, he explains, there's been virtually no recent trend towards job enrichment in the American workplace. This is, well, blatant nonsense. Since for the last 15 years or more, workers have not had the choice between higher wages and anything for the simple reason that the real wages have fallen relative to the standard of living. Payback is the kind of trouble the prudent worker does not take to counselors in the employee assistant program. What I espouse is something that money can't buy. A new way of life. The abolition of work is beyond bargaining since it implies the abolition of bosses to bargain with. By his delicate reference to the standard job package, Steele betrays the reality that the ordinary job applicant has as much a chance to dicker over the con content of his work as the average shopper has to haggle over prices in the supermarket checkout line. Even the mediated collective bargaining of the unions, never the norm, 
is now unavailable to the vast majority of workers. Besides, unions don't foster reforms like workers control, since if workers controlled work, they'd have no use for brokers to sell their labor power to a management, the function of which they have usurped. Since the revolt against work is not, could not be, institutionalized, Steele is unable to even imagine there is one. Steele is an industrial sociologist the way Gene Autry is a cowboy. He commits malpractice in every field he dabbles in. He's a bizarro da Vinci, a veritable Renaissance klutz. Surely no other anthropologist thinks The Flintstones was a documentary. With truly truly Ptolemic persistence, Steele hangs epicycle upon epicycle in order to reconcile reality with his market model. Take the health hazards of work. If an activity occupies a great deal of people's time, it will probably occasion a great deal of death and injury. Thus, there are many deaths in the home. Does this show that housing is inherently murderous? A short, uh, a short answer is that I propose the abolition of work, not the abolition of housing, because housing, or rather shelter, is necessary, but work, I argue, is not. I'd say about housing what Steele says about work. If it is homicide, it is justifiable homicide. Not all of it. Not when slumlords rent out fire traps, but set that aside for now. And the analogy is absurd unless all activities are equally dangerous, implying that you might just as well chain smoke or play Russian roulette as eat a salad or play patty cake. Some people die in their sleep, but not because they're sleeping, whereas many people die because they're working. If work is more dangerous than many activities unrelated to work that people choose to do, the risk is part of that case against work. I have no desire to eliminate all danger from life, only for risks to be freely chosen when they accompany and perhaps enhance the pleasure of the play. Steele asserts typically, without substantiation, that workplace safety varies with income. As incomes rise, jobs become safer. Workers have more alternatives and can insist on greater compensation for higher risk. I know of no evidence for such relationship. There should be a tendency, if Steele is right, for better paid jobs to be safer than worse paid jobs. But coal miners make much more money than janitors, and firemen make much less money than lawyers. Anything to Steele's correlation, if there is anything to it, is readily explained. Elite jobs are just better in every way than grunt jobs. Safer, better paid more prestigious. The less you have, the less you have. So much for trade-offs. Amusingly, the only evidence that is consistent with Steele's conjecture is evidence he elsewhere contradicts. Occupational injuries and fatalities have increased in recent years, even as real wages have fallen. But Steele is ideologically committed to the fairy tale of progress. He says, quote, workers have chosen to take most of the gains of increased output in the form of more goods and services and only a small part of these gains in the form of less time working. It wasn't the workers who took these gains, not in higher, uh, (laughs) not in higher wages, not in safer working conditions and not in shorter hours. Hours of work have increased. It must be then that in the 80s and after, workers have chosen lower wages, longer hours, and greater danger on the job. Yeah, sure, that, that must be it. Steele, or Ramsey Steele, as he used to sign off when he wrote for the hippie paper Oz in the 60s, is, if often witless, sometimes witty, as when he calls me a rope stretched over the abyss between, oh, I can't even, uh, Ral Venegam and Sid Vicious. My leftist critics haven't done as well. After I called Open Road the rolling stone of anarchism, it took those anarcho-leftists a few years to call me the Bob Hope of anarchism. Obviously a stupendous effort on their part. The abolition of breathing, what a sense of humor the guy has, is its ham-handedness aside an especially maladroit move by a libertarian. I am in favor of breathing. As Ed Lawrence has written of me, 
His favorite weapon is the pen knife. And when he goes for the throat, breathe easy. The usual result is a tracheotomy of inspiration. As it happens, there is light to be shed on the libertarian position on breathing. Ayn Rand is always inspirational and often uh, oracular for libertarians. A strident atheist and vehement rationalist, she felt, in fact, that she and three or four of her disciples were the only really rational people there were. Rand remarked that she worshipped smokestacks. For her, as for Lyndon Lerche, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Lyndon LaRouche, uh, they not only stood for, they were the epitome of human accomplishment. She must have meant it since she was something of a human smokestack herself. She was a chain smoker as were the other rationals in her entourage. In the end, she abolished her own breathing. She died of lung cancer. Now, if Sir David Ramsey Steele is concerned about breathing, he should, rem uh, sh he should remonstrate, not with me, but with the owners of the smokestacks I'd like to shut down. Like Rand, I'm an atheist, albeit with pagan tendencies. But I worship nothing, and I'd even rather worship God than smokestacks. Um, the person on YouTube replied back with a paragraph. I haven't read it. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> like, I'm just, just not going to. But if anybody wants a, a fucking link to like have some fun with it, um, feel free. I'll put it in chat. Um, there you go. Um, yeah, it's on, it's on YouTube. Have some fun. Let, um, Alex, go for it. Smack him around a bit if you want. This guy's a dick, but I like his doubt. No, um, I, I've, I've said this before. Um, Bob Black is an asshole. He's an asshole. There's no way around that. But, like, remember, like, the, the South Park, sometimes you need a dick to fuck an asshole, right? Because a pussy won't be able to do it. That sort of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Like Bob Black is that dick from time to time. He's the dude who comes in the room and is like, you know what? Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. And fuck you. And he can do it in poetic ways. He can do it in direct ways. His style of writing is very interesting. Uh, I, I admire his writing style. Um, but yes, he, he has never been afraid of getting into it with somebody. I mean, feel free to take a swipe, Alex. Just tell him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, you know, feel free to feel free to take a swipe at least. Um, yeah, I, I I've always enjoyed Bob Black. Um, I enjoy him outside of the abolition of work. He gives really good interviews. I've considered I considered at the height of the like anti work um, fucking drama to actually just call Bob. Like he's he's reachable. He's, you can reach out to him and be like, Bob, you want to comment? That is true, Amaris. Uh, I might read this next section. I might read this next section. Uh, it's shorter. It's, it's a shorter section, <clears throat> but it's, you know, just by the title, you can sort of enjoy. No future for the workplace. The best future for the workplace, as for the battlefield, is no future at all. Like, you know, like, uh, I think it was Amherst that said, uh, no, it was Fertus, that, like, shots fired. Like, right out of the gate. Bob likes to say, like, Bob likes to say what he likes to say right out of the fucking gate. Right, the the first line in the abolition of work is no one should ever work. That's the first fucking line. No one should ever work. So, yeah, I I always enjoy reading Bob. Jesus Christ, that's long. Um. 
Well, I mean, for two, right? Uh, journalism 101. If somebody tells you the sky is blue and somebody tells you the sky is red, it's not your job to report both of those. Your job is to look out the fucking window and see which of one is telling the truth. Right? Like that's... That's the basis of journalism we seem to have forgotten. And now, now, now what you see is, well, we have to report, we have to report both sides. We have to be fair and balanced in our reporting. No, you don't. Your job is to, to analyze this data and tell me fucking like a good journalist goes out and checks like, oh yeah. In fact, the person saying this is a fucking neo-Nazi skinhead and you probably should know that about them. Oh, thanks. That was useful information. Right? Like that's, we've, we've lost, we've lost this shit somewhere along the way. Yeah, you, yeah, your side of the pond knows a little something about that impartiality bullshit that the BBC gets up to. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's not your fucking job. It's not what impartiality looks like. It's not what journalism looks like. I, I, yeah. Well, Amorous, I'm okay with that. I don't see... I don't see the problem with that. Right? Like... If you're in a room of... Room with, like... Uh, if you're in a room full of, like, f Christian fundamentalists... It doesn't really matter what you're in favor of. It's it's a matter of like, hey, um, that person over there wants to literally execute trans people. Can we not do that? Well, all you are is against something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a room full of shit ideas. My job right now is to call out the shit ideas. Yeah, that's that's what Bob Black has taken upon himself, it seems like. His, his role within the anarchist milieu is the dude who fucking calls out the shit ideas. Like his job is professional agitator slash like caller outer. Like that's, that seems to be over his like course of his life. Like that seems to be his, his fucking, that's the mantle he has assumed for himself is like, yeah, there's a lot of shit fucking ideas out there. And I'm going to spend a lot of time poking holes in the people and the ideas. Fair enough. Let somebody else build. Somebody else has to tear down, right? Like the dude who tears down the building oftentimes isn't the same dude who builds the new building. Demolition and construction are two different facets of of the activity concerning, right? Like Bob Black is the demolition team. You bring in the demo team, they knock the thing the uh, they knock the building the fuck down, and then you bring in the construction team and they build a new building in its place. Bob Black is demo. I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm fine with that demarcation of, uh, of roles. He's very, very good at it. I don't think a person needs to be balanced in like, you know, that sort of way. I, I think in a society where we have specialization anyway, there you go. Fair enough, Alex. Fair enough. Oh, what do I got in shared content? People fucking doing things. Hey! Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm hundred percent fucking. I'm okay with that. Um. All right. Let's do the second section.
I mean, Alex, I have literally driven the ANCAPs from this space. And, like, yeah. Like, that's the, the tankies and ANCAPs. I have, dude, I went on the war path for a couple of weeks. I mean, God knows. I spent how many fucking weeks recording 12 hours of anti ANCAP bullshit? Analysis of right libertarianism and anarcho, so called anarcho capitalist theory. Jesus, goddamn Christ. Like, dude, yeah, you just gotta fucking leave them no quarter. It's that simple. Like, yeah. Also, uh, we were talking about this last night on a VC. Um, um, blue collar gyms and like self-help self-improvement spaces why are those dominated by right-wingers and libertarian types because the left conceded them because the left took refuge in their ivory towers of academia right why are there not leftists like leftist electricians and leftist framers and leftist concrete guys and leftist rebar guys and leftist gym bros and leftist fucking like they completely neglected the spaces of the worker they completely neglected the spaces of the actual worker the left abandoned them so of course the right wing got them it's the fault of the left I want to take the gym bro area back. I'm thinking about, I, this is what I've been thinking. This is, uh, hey, you want to know something? This is what I was thinking of t today. I was looking at um, personal trainer certifications. Rabbit, it can be done, but it hasn't. You know, you know that is a fucking, it's not even a minority rabbit. You know that's like, that's a statistical anomaly. It's an outlier that would be eliminated from the study. I was looking at, um, yeah, I was looking at um, personal training certifications and what it would cost to fucking do that and that sort of thing. Because I think that that's, that's the area I'm most happy helping people these days. What's up, Panda? Uh, we just got done doing a Bob Black uh, reading. We're going to do a little more here in a second. And then we're going to, uh, but right now we're talking about, uh, spaces that the left abandoned and the right captured. Um, yeah, I think that would be an area that like self-improvement, nutrition, betterment, those sorts of areas need recapturing by the left. Those are the <laughs> yeah, it's basically a rounding error. No, yeah, 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 yeah. No. Um, Exactly. Yeah, rabbit. Exactly. Um, I think it'd be really good. Nice, Viva. That's good fucking practice, Viva. Good on you. And it helps that you're in Germany. I mean, Americans don't even know what a fucking co-op is. I mean, Marcus. Yeah, video games in, in its entirety. I mean, for two, so I get why they don't go on Joe Rogan. Jesus Christ. I, I understand that. Viva, not in this country, it's not. Dude, hard labor has been captured by the right wing slash libertarian um, mentality. Uh, rabbit i was i was looking at like an NS, uh, nasm i think is the 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 biggie right um like uh, yeah i was looking at like an nasm fucking training certification plus like a nutrition nutritionist certification there's you'd be surprised what you can espouse what you can would I go to Joe Rogan's uh, pos podcast? You know what? Yeah. Yeah, I probably would. I'd talk shit to him. 
I talk shit to his face. I tell him I'm about to talk shit to his face. Like that's yeah, I, I think I could be comfortable doing that. Like I'm I'm about to criticize the fuck out of you, Joe. You okay with that? Can you handle it? You got your big boy pants on? Right? Like I got some shit to say to you that the left wants you to hear. Like the real left, not the fucking Democrats. Like we need you to hear this. Oh, hell, a guy, bro's gonna listen to his nutritionist before he listens to his mother. You, you, rabbit, you, fucking rabbit, you get it. Like, that, dude, that is a route of infiltration into people's m mentality. Like, I really think that there's something to it. Oh, um, Alex, I can already do that. Dude, the, the certification is a formality. I already, like, redesigned Caboose's diet for him and got him like he's losing weight and shit now and back on it and i can alex just talk to me sometime Get, trust me i can sit you down like I, yeah um yeah i can go way beyond meal planning um yeah hit me up fucking hit me up after the fucking show no big deal um hassan asked to talk to joe rogan and rogan never responded that doesn't surprise me um, I, it's up to you, Karina. Uh, they proposed a minimum wage increase in Germany to 12 euros. So I went with my uncle and discussed him. One of his workers should get 15 now. Instead, he always paid more than minimum, but still, fuck yeah, Viva. Keep chase after it. Um, dude, I, I look, I would rather Vosh go on Joe Rogan than fucking Hassan. Vosh is an excellent rhetorician say anything else you want about him i don't give a shit about any other thing you're about to mention or bring up i do not care vosh is an excellent rhetorician you cannot take that away from that man that is that all other issues aside um oh yeah Dude, I mean, the quinoa is just not great to fucking make a huge protein diet out of either way. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that last that last sentence fucking rabbit's great. Uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't build a diet around quinoa to start with. Um, <laughs> rock on, Karina. No, Caboose, he really isn't that bad. Oh, God. Yeah, rabbit. In which it isn't. It's it's still unbalanced. It's a complete protein, but it's not a complete protein. It's got everything in it. It just doesn't have it in the ratios in the uh, in in the percentages that you actually need for a complete protein. So if you made a diet wholly out of quinoa, you would de be deficient in a, a couple of uh, amino acids. It's not a complete protein. <laughs> it's just technically a complete protein, which is fucking ad campaigns and marketing, man. Fucking, it's a hell of a thing, ain't it? Uh, oh, Alex, I can, we'll see what I can do. Seriously, Alex, I'll sit down with you. We can, we can knock something out. We can knock something out. Uh, thanks for the follow. Nice rabbit. I'm also becoming an ordained minister on that day. Nice, Karina. Fucking nice. Yeah, I got you. I got you, Alex. Um, we'll see what we'll see what we can do. Um, all right. I have. I want to do a couple more pages. A couple, few more pages. Was that one, two, three, four, four pages of text? Um, no future for the workplace. I want to do one more section. And then we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, no, we were talking about that last. We were talking about that last night, actually. All of the areas and spaces that the left has conceded to the right because they took uh, they took uh, refuge in the, the the ivory towers of academia, and meanwhile, the libertarians and the ANCAPs and the GOP moved in. And, like, I mean, 
personal responsibility, working together, building something, using your hands, like the hammer and sickle were the fucking, like, look, I'm not a fucking commie, but dude, the hammer and sickle aren't exactly the symbols of academia, right? Like those are the symbols of building and creating and growing and doing, right? Like that's like the, the, the space of the left, the spaces that the left conceded to the right, because they weren't stolen. They weren't taken from them. They walked away from them. They turned their backs on them. They just left. Oh, well, Lada. <laughs> well, Lada, I'm, I'm close to that. Well, Lada, I, I, I respect it. Yeah, uh, fucking time. I, I've always had a very loose relationship with time. So... Hold on, let me just, oh, Jesus, fucking the right hip flexor, oh, oh sitting, sitting, oh, hold on, let's fucking do this over here, so at least I'm on camera, Nine. Yeah. So I don't so I don't fucking flash my fucking junk on stream. There we go. Oh, all right. Oh. Time is a weird soup. All right. Let's do this. <clears throat> Oh, I mean, yeah, Karina. I'm not surprised at that. I'm not, I'm not surprised at all, frankly. Um, water. Water, Kai. Ah, oh, water. Water. No future for the workplace. The best future for the workplace, as for the battlefield, is no future at all. With belated notice taken of a crisis in the workplace, the consultants surge forth with faddish reforms whose common denominator is that they excite little interest in the workplace itself. Done to, not won by, the workers, their tinkerings are very much business as usual for business as usual. They may raise productivity temporarily till the novelty wears off, but... Fiddling with the who, what, when, and where of work doesn't touch the source of the malaise. Why work? Changing the place of work to the home is like moving from Albania to Somalia in search of a better life. Flex time is, as the Microsoft Office joke goes, for professionals who can work any 60 hours a week they want to. It's not for the service sector where the greatest numbers toil. It will not do for fry cooks who flex their time at the lunch hour, nor bus drivers at rush hour. Job enrichment is part pep rally, part painkiller, uplift, and aspirin. Even workers' control, which most North American managers find unthinkable, is only self-managed servitude. Like letting prisoners elect their own guards. For Western employees, glasnost and uh, perestroika, uh, pe perestroika uh, how soon we forgot those unforgettable words, uh, are too little and too late. Measures that would have been applauded by the 19th and 20th century socialist and anarchist militants. Indeed, it was from them that the consultants cribbed them. At best, now meet with sullen indifference. And at worst, are taken as signs of weakness. Especially from North American bosses, relatively backward in their management style, as in most other ways, concessions would only arouse expectations. They cannot fulfill and still remain in charge. The democracy movements worldwide have swept aside the small fry. The only enemy is the common enemy. The workplace is the last bastion of authoritarian coercion. Disenchantment with work runs as deeply here as did disenchantment with communism in Eastern Europe. Indeed, many were not all that enchanted with either of them in the first place. Why did they submit? Why do we? Because, as individuals... We have no choice. 
There is far more evidence of a revolt against work than there had ever been a revolt against communism. Were it otherwise, there would be no market for tranquilizers like job redesign, job enrichment, the quality of working life, etc. The worker at work, as to a tragic extent off the job, is passive-aggressive. Not for him, and especially not for her, the collective solidarity heroics of labor's storied past. But absenteeism, job jumping, embezzlement of goods and services, self-sedation with drink or drugs, and the effort so perfunctory that it may cross the line to count as sabotage. These are the ways the little fish emulate the big fish, who, flush from peddling junk bonds, loot savings, and loan associations, and extending home loans indiscriminately, let government bail them out if they can't collect. They triumphantly downsize, outsource, and Toyotaize, along with new requisitions and repressions which await their neologis neologisms. What if there were a general strike, and it proved permanent because it made no demands? It was already the satisfaction of all demands. There was a time when the unions would have thwarted anything like that, but they don't count anymore. Someday the bosses may miss them. The future belongs to the zero work movement. The revolt against work. Should one well up, unless its object, object is impossible because the work is inevitable. Do not even the, con, uh, do not even the consultants and the techno-futurologists take work and so much else for granted. Indeed they do, which is reason enough to be skeptical. They never yet foresaw a future which came to pass. They prophesized moving sidewalks and single-family air cars, not computers or recombinant DNA. Their Amer the American century was Japanese before it was half over. Futurologists are always wrong because they're always only extrapolators. The limit of their vision is more of the same. Although history, the record of previous futures, the graveyard of previous predictions, is replete with discontinuities, which with surprises like the personal computer, try to find it anticipated in any science fiction. Or Eastern Europe, try to find any academic and or intelligence community anticipations of the imminent demise of communism. Attend to the utopians instead. The difference between the utopians and the futurologists is the difference between more of the same and something different. Since the utopians believe life could be different, and it will, what they say just might be true. Work, referring to what workers do, should not be confused with exertion. Work, in the physicist's sense, play can be more strenuous than work. In a social sense, work is compulsory production, something done for some other reason than the satisfaction of doing it. That other might, reason might be violence, in the case of slavery, dearth, in the case of unemployment, or an internalized compulsion, the Calvinist's calling, the Buddhist's right livelihood. Unlike the play impulse, none of these motives even maximizes our productive potential. Work is not very productive. Although production is its only justification. Enter the consultants with their toys. Although it does not have to be play, uh, although it does not have to be, play can be productive. So forced labor may not be necessary. When we work, we produce without pleasure so as to consume without creating. Containers drained and filled, drained and filled, drained and filled, like the locks of a canal. Job enrichment? The phrase implies a prior condition of job impoverishment, which debunks the myth of work as a source of wealth. Work devalues life by appropriating something so priceless it cannot be bought back no matter how high the GMP is. Life enrichment, on the other hand, consists of the suppression of many jobs and the recreation, in every sense, of the others as activities intrinsically enjoyable. If not to everyone, for any length of time, then for some, at some times in some circumstances. Work standardizes people as it does products. But since people by nature strive to produce themselves, work wastes effort lost to conflict and stress. Play 
is pluralistic, bringing into play the full panoply of talents and passions, submerged by work and anesthetized by leisure. The work world frowns on job jumping. The play-oriented or athletic life encourages hobby hopping. As their work conditioning wears off, more and more people will feel more and more aptitudes and appetites unfolding like the colorful wings of a brand new butterfly, and the Ludic mode of production will be more firmly consolidated. You say you love your job. Fine. Keep doing it. Your sort will help to tide us over during the transition. We feel sorry for you, but respect your choice as much as we suspect that it's rooted in your refusal to admit that your present prodigious efforts made life, especially yours, no better. They only made life seem to go by faster. You were coping in your own way. You were hurrying to get it over with. With the abolition of work, the economy is, in effect, abolished also. Replacing today's Teamsters hauling freight will be welcome wagons, visiting friends and bearing gifts. Why go to the trouble to buy and sell? Too much paperwork. Too much work. Although the consultants are inept as reformers, they might make magnificent revolutionaries. They rethink work, whereas workers want to think about anything but. But... They must rethink their own jobs first. For them to transfer their loyalties to the workers might not be too difficult. It's expedient to join the winning side, after all. But they will find it harder to acknowledge that, in the end, the experts on work are the workers who do it, and especially the workers who refuse to. Short chapter, like I said. Bob being a little less snarky and a little more idealistic. Mm. There we go. Tab out that next section. Oh. Uh, you're going to have to... Really fucking narrow that down. Um, and AJ, sorry you couldn't sorry you couldn't slip, fall asleep to the SMR of shitting on work. Um, but as for the uh, as for turn the machines off, you're going to have to be more specific. Um, Yeah, yeah, Alex. I'm just trying to fucking fill out some of the YouTube theory content sections uh, on my playlist. Um, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, if fucking... If I, I, I have been known to sleep to interesting things before. Um... Technical difficulties. Um, Tom Scott's old crew. Well over a decade. Probably closer to 15, 20 now. I, uh, I I will put them on. I've I've heard those old episodes dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. But I can recite them. But I still watch them. I still listen to them. Um... <clears throat> So, I, I understand. Uh, Mystery Biscuits! Oh, my. Told you. I can, dude, there's, like, I can go line for line with some of those old episodes. Like, I can literally just quote them. His name's Gary Brandon, built for ledger, not for speed. Chris Joel, he likes books. And Chris Joel would always just say something random. And bounciest man on the internet, Matt Gray. And then Matt would say something funny, and I'm Tom Scott. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I'd love to know what, what, what Turn the Machines Off is referring to. I'd love to know more. 
Um, yeah, we can kick that in the ass. There's a couple of th tricks we can use, Alex. I mean, Amorous, it's not designed to. Like, literally, he, he says in Abolish Work that this isn't the, the this isn't the work of the socialists or the Trotskyists, right? Um, fucking, they, they want, um, they want to change who you work for, not the issue of work. Ah, thank you, Alex. Um, like, yeah, that's, that's literally, he points that out. Like whether, um, in advanced work riddled societies, including all industrial societies, whether capitalist or communist work invariably acquires other attributes and accentuates its obnoxiousness. Uh, usually, and this is even more true in communist than capitalist countries where the state is almost the only employer and everyone is an employee work is employment, which means selling yourself on an installment plan, right? Like he's, he's unequivocal in that matter. That like, yeah, no, the communists are even worse about this than the capitalists. <laughs> Rabbit, you going out there with your, do you have your, what's the line from, uh, uh, fr uh, from the movie? How many, how many, uh, uh, flares do you have to have on your vest? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, he, he doesn't mince words. Uh, yeah, I'll, Alex, yeah. <laughs> office was, how many flares? Yeah, like, I don't know the exact line. Is, is it 17? Is it 17 pieces of flare? Damn near bulletproof. Love it. Uh, yeah, Alex, we'll just have to do a VC. We'll just have to do, just do a voice call. Um, and I, I've got, I've got questions. I got questions about what you can do physically at this point and your disability and stuff like that. And we'll, we'll see what we can't do to jog things. Um, cause I mean, you look at me, right? I managed to get rid of the last, like there was a little bit of fat, like just, just in and around my abdomen that was just hanging on by a fuck it. Like just literally just a fucking death grip. And I managed to carve it out too takes work yeah no worries we'll fucking sort some shit out between growing up with a uh in hospitals with a you know lifelong nurse of a mother and then all of the like research i've had to do for all of the various things that have gone wrong with this body over the years and my obsession with like you know just physical activities and extreme sports and the injuries i've racked up and stuff like that dude i'm already fucking i might as well be fuck i'm i i should get fucking i should get automatically like grandfathered in like i should be able to audit these fucking certifications basically like just give me the test just give me the test skip all the rest of the shit just give me the fucking 120 question test and let me see if i can do this <laughs> fuck it yeah like i i would generally feel like i should just be you know done oh uh, Fucking, I mean, designing meal programs and plans for friends and shit like that. And just my protein shake designs alone. Fucking taking into account the micronutrients and macronutrients and fucking, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I should be able to audit these these programs. Just like, let me pay for the, the, the test only and see if I can't pass it first time out. Fuck. <laughs> oh... All right, let's see. Is that... Um, let's see. Let me check these things. Uh, no, it's not under graphics, guys. It's under video. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, content. It goes under playlist. That would go under theory, right? Yeah. How am I titling Bob Black stuff? Uh... Okay, that's how I'm titled. Oh, Jesus. So... Bob Black is a revolutionary. Okay, cool. Great. Uploads. Bam. 
uploading now. It's nice to have a solid connection. Uh, just sent a self-portrait. What you got? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, this is Rabbit's self-portrait. This is Rabbit's self-portrait. Uh, I sent an emotional text to a friend slash old boss asking about work starting again. I had been just disappointed. <laughs> it's a little late to be sending that text, Karina. That's only my only criticism there. Um, but beyond that, good on you. Oh, you're looking you you're looking good. I see what you're after, Alex. I see what you're after, but you're looking good. We can work on that. Um, yep. He's, n he's not, probably, probably awake. <laughs> oh, fuck it, eh? <laughs> sure, the tricolor is heavy, but when you're going, go all the way. I get it. I get it. You know, fucking commit. And rabbits around 200 years confirmed. No, rabbits a fucking vampire. Fucking for sure. Um. Okay, so hang on. Let me go back to this one. I think this is. All right. Let me just check. Sorry, I'm doing stuff on air. I know. Fucking. One zero one four four one zero one four four. That is the steel one, right? Yep, that's the steel one. Okay, so that is nope. Smokestack lightning. There we go. <laughs> oh. I don't even have to see it, and it fucking makes me smile. <laughs> oh, fucking old two holes himself. Oh. <laughs> Vampires aren't real. Haven't seen one in the last 500 years. Oh, Rabbit, have you not? Rabbit, you haven't seen. That's Haz. That's Haz. Um, yeah, has posted photos of himself shirtless flexing, um, to, uh, to Twitter talking about how pe how can someone be so smart and look like this? Don't be jealous. So, and that's him talking too, by the way, that's him arguing with Vosh. And so I just pitched it up and sped it up. Oh, I saw all four feet of himself. Dude, rabbit fucking skinny fat skipped every leg day all he's ever done it looks like his work his delts and his fucking biceps like i took one look at those photos i'm like jesus christ i don't know what you're asking karina we just need a tank that comes out and squishes <laughs> Jesus Christ, we could do that. Yeah, there he is. The, it, the story goes, Rabbit, basically the, the lore thus far is that I was out one day and I saw Haz in the street and he was going to get, like, he was going to get run over by a car. Um, and... Like, so I, I pick, you know, before he got squished or picked up by a fucking stray cat, I picked him up. I put him in my pocket. I brought him home. I feed him using a, a dropper and I give him soy milk every day. He seems to, he seems to really like it. Um, yeah, like that's, that's, he so that's pocket has. Um, the other night we came up with po like pocket has like pocket sand. If you're ever in a fight, you just deploy pocket has and he just fucking latches onto somebody's face and starts fucking like, you know, you know, yeah, that's pocket has. Well, has he two holes himself? I, I figured that that was comedy is the best way to just reduce somebody. And I think has needs reducing. 
Once, uh, once he's back to health, I can get him on a hamster bottle. That is true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he's not. He's not up to mushed up corn yet. No, nope, sorry. He's still, he's still struggling to keep, keep solid foods down. It was, it was a, it was a rough time in the streets for him. He was, it, you know, from what I can understand, he was chased by some, some stray, stray animals and, you know, it, yeah, it's a rough time. So, yeah, pocket has. Fucking schmuck. <laughs> oh. All right, let's see. Bam. There's my, there it is. Uh, just be careful, has he two holes bites? Yeah, I mean, he bites, he bites, but it's, it's more like, you know, it's like a hamster bite. It's, it's, it's in that ca category. If it's like, you know, it's, it, it, yeah, it can break skin occasionally if he really, really tries, but honestly, it's no worse than a paper cut. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't worry about it. You know, if he scratches, if he scratches me or, or, or bites me, it's like, you know, it's like a puppy bite this is what it is. Impotent nib nibbling. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. Oh, there we go. It's dirtier than hamster bites. Yeah, you just wash it out with some alcohol or peroxide. You're good to go. Um. He's the type of dude to do like neck and jaw exercises, isn't he, Rabbit? Like he's that he's the fucking head strap dude, right? Like fucking I I see him doing that. Yeah. Dude, the fact that he's been like really on that fucking warpath recently. Um fuck <laughs> about Lysenko and uh Mendelian genetics. Rabbit, you see, you you see, he like flunked out of law school, right? He moved to LA to try and make it, and that he's he's unironically doing the I moved to LA to bitch about LA arc. Um, it could make it worse, Alex. Dude, early on, those exercises can fucking really do a number on your jaw. Um, just be warned. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he fucking, he flunked out, and now he's in L.A. doing the, like, L.A. is horrible! Why are you here? Right? Like, it took me many years to learn to hate Las Vegas. When I first moved here, I thought it was great. You know, it took me, it took me a decade to properly learn how to hate Las Vegas, right? If I moved to Vegas and hated it immediately, I would be a fucking idiot, has unironically has moved to LA to do the I hate LA arc. It is so hilarious. Uh, Marcus, yes, but not for long. Don't worry. He he will not be joining you as one of your 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 colleagues. Um, that that has he has taken well. The road has ended. <laughs> I was going to say he took the exit off of the freeway, but no, the freeway ended straight up. He's not cut out for it. Yeah. Um, I can't wrap my head around how he thinks Lysenkoism didn't create films. Dude, tech support. Forget the Lysenkoism didn't create, do create famines. He's unironically on like this anti-Mendelian arc where genes are an unprovable philosophical concept and that genetics is like liberal Western creation. Like that it's like neoliberalism is, is involved somehow with the concept of DNA and genetics. It, it's, 
It's fucking weird as shit, man. It's fucking weird as shit. Yeah, exactly. Genes are just CIA propaganda used to control the population. 100%. Oh, tech, tech support. Empiricism is is fucking anti-revolutionary. Empiricism is reactionary. I'm sure it's something like that. Unironic Lysenkoism. And God wept. <laughs> I have a ficus to read theory too. Really good word choice there. For twos. Really good word choice. The ficus made that funny. 100%. Ficus is a funny word. It's good word choice. Uh, I'll buy him a ficus to read theory to. <laughs> Absolutely mental, bro. And it? Um, yeah, fucking has. He, he is a special case. And the fact that people actually listen to him is terrifying. There's, there's like people who, who, literally just fucking watch that and like yeah this dude's making sense i know right caboose it's a good word it's a good word ficus it's the f leading into the i the ficus and the cuss right the the hard k sound it's a good fucking it's a good word ficus um no no i didn't Alex, I saw you were watching it and somebody else posted it and I was like, I can't, I can't watch Haz. I can't watch Haz. That, look, I, I like philosophically, I'm an idealist. Like by definition, I'm, I'm an anarchist, right? I'm an idealist. Oh, of course he outed himself as a virgin within 10 minutes. Like, uh, uh, of course. Nobody, I did anybody think Kaz had ever fucking touched a woman? I mean, I thought that was obvious. I mean, I'm closer. Oh, 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 Rabbit, did you never see the Lamarckian theory shit? He busted out Lamarck for um, for the, the two holes. When he got tagged with the two holes shit, he busted out Lamarck. To defend himself after okay so first he went with feminists will will, will come up with the wildest shit uh y'all like he oh yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah he went with um there's a feminist conspiracy against himself they've made up an extra hole to make him look bad and when that didn't fly he went with a lamarckian take on the real and the other yeah that was that was take number two for uh, for has he two holes when when the feminist uh, conspiracy theory didn't fly either. Yeah, that was. Caboose. Right? That's what an adult would do. <laughs> I I have no words. I cannot word. <laughs> right, Rabbit? Um, fucking, yeah. Yeah, he fucking, he pumped out some crazy fucking couple of paragraphs invoking Lamarck and, you know, how, uh, how, like, liberals have to, uh, liberals are obsessed with, with uh with the uh with the intangible of the real and that the uh they have to other and blah 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 it was fucking suit it was pseudo philosophical gibberish that he was spewing out in the moment in an attempt to cover his ass for being completely ignorant of basic biology <laughs> God, I love you, Caboose. I really do love you, Caboose. Just know that. I will forever love you, Caboose. <laughs> Pocket ass! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's exactly what I envisioned. It's exactly what I envisioned. Oh. <laughs> F 
fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's so goofy. He's so goofy. I just, I can't, I can't imagine not believing in like genetics or like DNA or believing that like you can get communist potatoes. That like you can convince because if if a communist plants a series of potatoes, they don't compete for resources. Like I, I just like I mean yeah, I'm gonna forever make fun of him for the two holes thing because that's low hanging fruit and that's the thing that you know annoys him the most. Like that's the thing that bothers him. You know it bothers him. You know it bothers him. So I'm gonna keep poking that one forever. But. Like, just all the crazy shit. Oh, Rabbit, you haven't been around. Rabbit, did you know he's a proponent of abiotic oil theory, too? He he thinks the Earth generates oil. Yeah, yeah. Ra he has is a proponent of abiotic oil theory. He He thinks the Earth creates oil. That, like, it's just a part of the geological processes of the mantle and crust. Yeah! <laughs> For two, that's a good fucking point, For two. Hold on, hold the fuck on. Yeah, Rabbit. Yeah, he's, he's, oh, he posted a bunch of crazy shit. Oh, he, dude, he, he fucking posted a bunch of crazy shit. Um, hold on. All right. You ready, rabbit? I'm doing this to you. I, I hope you've got like a tumbler of scotch or something ready. Uh, I'm gonna go through a list. I I feel I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize ahead of time. Um <clears throat> I am a Marxist Leninist. We believe in inclusive. Inclusive. I am a Marxist Leninist. We believe in. <clears throat> Siberian land bridge, land reform, traditionalist modernity, proletarian dictatorship, Eurasian renaissance, Lysenko exoneration, socialist realism, work as life's prime want, Telluric cosmism. He made that one up, by the way. Telluric cosmism is just a has creation. It, we know Telluric like current and we know cosmism, but there is no Telluric cosmism. Has just made it up. Mongol humanism. Patriotism. Serving the people, capital P. Honoring family and community. Literary acculturation. Prosperity and wealth. Health and fitness. Pronatalism. Anti-Malthusianism and abiotic oil theory. These are the things that Marxist-Leninists believe, apparently. <laughs> ah, yes, Stalin. Famously a good family man. Yeah. As I understand it, he went to bat for his son, right? Helped him out. Uh, 
Toyuric cosmism is code for geocentrism? Uh, geocentrism? I mean, possibly. I don't fucking know. But, I mean, if it is for Tusk, I... I <coughs> let's just put it this way. <clears throat> if Has said tomorrow he believed in geocentrism, I wouldn't blink. I wouldn't blink. I'd just be like, of course he does. Of course he fucking does. Right? I'd just like, add it to the fucking list of crazy shit he believes. That's just what he does. He believes in a whole bunch of crazy shit. So, yeah. I still, I want to hear him explain. If anybody has a clip of him explaining telluric cosmism, me, 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 I want it. I want I want to hear I want to hear has explain what the fuck is telluric cosmism. Oh yeah, I'm sure. We don't know R rabbit. We don't know. We don't we don't know. We don't know. I think I know who you're talking about, Mosh. Oh, yeah. Has has is a flat earther? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Um, I Mosh, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, I think I've seen videos by him. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 Mosh, yep. Um, you think Has would buy into the trees aren't real conspiracy? Yeah, if we if we broached it correctly, yeah, he'd one hundred percent buy into it. He'd one hundred percent buy into the trees aren't real conspiracy. By the way, trees aren't real, Rabbit. You weren't around for that. Trees aren't real. Trees aren't real. Um, just know that. Um, it's an amazing documentary we watched. It's amazing. Um. Yeah. Oh, dude. Um, you were hit. Wait. No, because we watched it in VC. You weren't. We watched it in VC. I'm pretty sure you weren't present for it. The the three thousand like the the three hundred kilometer high silicon silicon trees. Yeah, I mean, the birds aren't... Clearly, birds are government drones. We all know that. Oh, well, good on you. Glad glad you know about it. Glad you've already taken that on board. Uh, and then, yeah, tech support. Yeah, trees aren't real. Trees, uh, it's all. It's a whole thing. I can, I can hook you up with the fucking documentary. It's great. Um, uh, fucking uh what is it um uh fucking oh god uh devil's tower yeah i think you saw it somewhere else rabbit because we watched it in vc on discord and you weren't around like you were you were that was like after the ddg bullshit um fucking um lava sentient um you, you the ukrainian shit rabbit Fucking translated and the woman. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah, during the dark times. Fucking, was it 1871 or some shit like that? Fucking, there was a nuclear expo a nuclear war that wiped out, like, all of humanity's history, apparently, or something. And we reset in, like, the 1870s or some shit like that. Yeah, uh, tech support. I can I can get you the fucking, uh, the, the um, documentary. It's amazing. It's amazing. Get stoned and watch it with some friends. You will have a good old time. Uh, Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Uh, no, Che, it is not. This is something else entirely. Devil's Tower in Wyoming. You know, um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the weird fucking rock tower thing. That is the stump of a tree that was used to be made out of silicon that was cut by our ancestors. Um, also, the Grand Canyon is a, a, a mining cut. It's a quarry. The The Grand Canyon is a quarry. It's a mining cut. Yeah. 
It, 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 I, like I said, it's 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 an intense watch. We had a, we had a good time. We had a good time watching it. <laughs> um, fucking is that done? Nope. Fifty seven. Yeah, fucking remind me sometime. I'll get you. I'll, I'll upload it somewhere for you to export. Oh, I, I don't doubt it, Mosh. I don't doubt it. Whole channel that explains which stones are actually the remains uh, remains of giants. I don't doubt that in the least. That makes exact... That makes... Oh, God. I just saw... Furry panic is the latest dumb GOP attack on schools. Right-wing parents are now attacking school boards over furries in the classroom. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> in Pennsylvania, Maine, Michigan, and Iowa, in recent months, school board meetings have been disrupted by allegations that educators are giving special treatment to furry students. While false, the widespread hoaxes play into a broader right-wing effort to discredit and demand further control over public education, culture war, blah, 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 blah. Rumors simmered for months in districts like Central York last year where concerned parents' Facebook groups promoted fears that furries could be in your child's classroom hissing at your child and licking themselves. Uh, yesterday I heard that at least one of our schools in our town has in one of the unisex bathrooms a litter box for the kids that identify as cats. Two, that 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 has been said in two different locations. That happened in Michigan as well. Michigan GOP co-chair Michonne Maddock soon amplified the cat scat claims by saying kids who identify as furries get a litter box in the school bathroom. Uh, just for the record, uh, no public schools are providing litter boxes in unisex bathrooms or otherwise. Um... Texas GOP candidate spread allegations that the schools were providing uh, bowls uh, and uh, tables were being lowered in middle and high schools to allow furries to more easily eat without utensils or their hands as a dog eats from a bowl. Again, that allegation wasn't true. Um... <laughs> We're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> oh, we're doomed. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> We're writing over to public loser. Guys, it's <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I can't. That broke me. That broke me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm crying. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I want to go to a fucking school board meeting and just start some insane rumor now. <laughs> Fuck it. We're fucked. We're fucked. I just want to go to a, a fucking school board meeting and just start some insane rumor. Oh, my God. Oh. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. Between the banned books list and the fucking furry, furry shit. Um, I'm, I'm fucking done. 
Alex, if you want to have a chat in VC after this and get the ball rolling, by all means, I am open to that. Uh, catch you all later. Say hi to public. Much love, guys.